Welcome to Celebrating Act Two. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life. Welcome back. Uh, John and I have uh, one of our favorite guests, uh, Michelle Fabrega, a relationship coach. Uh, how are you doing, Michelle? Good to have you. Good to be here, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, Art. I was just going to say, good to have you here again, Michelle. Um, it's You're a regular, and we really appreciate all the advice you give. Um, partners. Partners uh, uh, have to be involved with each other on more than just a sexual level where uh, we care about each other as human beings and our health. Uh, and particularly for those uh, enjoying the second half of their life, the celebrating act two, um, health changes as you get older. We uh, have challenges and issues and uh, we have to take care of each other, don't we? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So the topic for today is uh, I'm concerned about my partner's health, but they won't listen to me. Now, how often does that happen? <laughs> yeah, right. Um, a lot, right? And yeah. Um, unfortunately, yeah. it's true. It does happen a lot. Yeah, yeah. And and I love this. I love that we're talking about this because it really it's it's there's two people here, right? That we're talking about, and it, it's good to kind of dive into that. So, you know, as we know, each person ultimately makes their own choices. And uh, we might want our partner to do something differently, but in reality, it is up to them. And so we have to keep that in mind. We can still we can be their advocate and show up the best we can, but obviously, you know, complaining or nagging them, you know, really doesn't help. Well, I have um, uh, I have a great uh, partner, my wife, and uh, when there's something new uh, and and serious going on that hasn't been before. Um, we tend to go to an appointment together so that uh, I have another set of eyes and ears uh, listening and taking notes because I'm just sitting there taking it in and, you know, uh, and there may be a good outcome to come out, but I may just not pick up all the, the bits and pieces of it. And uh, uh, she's there. So, and we do this for each other, but uh, I am sure that there are a lot of people who uh, just, dealing with a partner maybe of uh, 20, 30, 40 years or just the last five years they're in a relationship with and uh, they don't want to discuss their health at all. Like uh, it's going to magically go away if they don't discuss it. How often do you run into that? Yeah, well, like I said, I think it's it's common. And, and first I want to say I love the what you're talking about, it, the way you and your wife are together, kind of being each, each other's advocate because when we're in the midst of our own health crisis, you know, we're, we're – scared, we're, we're stressed, we're worried, and we're not always listening and able to really ask the important questions. So I love that you have that, uh, and I want that for everybody, because I think it's really important to have someone with you to go through something like this with. Um, and, you know, some of the things that, I'm, that I want to touch on here first is, is not obviously when we're in a serious medical situation, but there's that too. But even before, right, something is starting to happen, maybe a change or something that, that one person is noticing, their partner is starting to notice, and they're not really doing anything about it. And so how do we, how do we have an impact on how, how do we have that conversation with them such that they'll hear us and not just, there you go again, I'm fine, it's nothing, you know, whatever. Right. So it's, it's really important that, you know, to, first of all, there's no right or wrong here, right? I mean, somebody could choose to ignore signs of something and it's not great, but we can't really make them do something different. And that's really important to notice first off that we can try to influence them. And, um, and, and the best way to do that really is to share really more vulnerably, you know, from our heart. Uh, oftentimes uh, people get through to each other by saying, uh, not that I, you need to do this, you need to do that. You know, why don't you do that? They do. I'm worried about you. Uh, I am concerned because... Uh, it hurts me when you don't take care of yourself. Things, you know, it, it's that non-accusatory. Is that the right word? Yeah, approach. it's also right. And I also noticed, and I don't. You probably noticed it too. But John, your tone of voice changed, right, when you went into like, "I'm worried about you." Oh, yeah. It's coming yeah. from a totally different place rather than like you need to, you know, up in here and we're thinking and strategizing and and 
those are great skills to have, obviously, those strategizing and, and but but to, to really come from like, wow, I'm concerned about you, just like you said, is beautiful. That's more likely to have an impact. And the person is going to see that you are, you have their best interest at heart. You're not just, you know, just trying to be a and, pest, right? And not nagging. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, part of this question is that, that really, that it's a twofold question. I'm concerned about my partner's health. And the second half is, but they won't listen to me. Uh, and and really, what we're talking about is partners who don't listen. How do you get your partner to listen to you, um, whether it's about health or anything else? But health is probably the most important thing we, we really share with our partners. Yeah. I mean, we see the, the changes, right, up close. Uh, oh, wow, yes. he's got that cough every night. I've noticed that. Or something is keeping him up in his stomach or whatever. So we notice some of those things because we – we're right close. And so those are the things that, you know, to, like you said, you know, I'm worried about you. Would you, you know, might you be willing to go see somebody about this or even around health choices, right? Even the more basic things about eating and stuff, our partner might be eating things that we don't think are good for them. And, um, you know, we can eat what we want to eat and make sure we're doing what, what is right for us. And then yeah. we can share our concerns in, in that more tender way where it's like, gee, you know, I know your doctor said you need to lose weight. And yet when I see you eating that hamburger, I feel a little stressed. And um, I just wanted to let you know that. Yeah, good. But but it, getting people to listen to you is a difficult thing, isn't it? Yeah. And I think even when you say that, getting people to listen, <laughs> there's even like a, you know, like a control aspect to it. Oh. But you know, like we're trying to get them to do something. It's like when we're coming from that intention, it doesn't go as well. It was like, wow, I really want to share something with them. They can do what they want with it. They may or may not respond. They may or may not listen. They may or may not do what I want them to do. But just to get them to listen, if that's your goal, I just want you to hear what, what's on my mind. Do you have a few moments for that? It's a really different conversation. Yeah, it is. And that's important because um, if people are listening to you and you feel like you've been heard, even if they don't do what you want them to do, you don't get frustrated. Right. But if you expect them to actually change, if you, you've set their goal for them, <laughs> <laughs> right? you're setting yourself up for frustration. Now, maybe they will change, maybe they won't. But uh, um, I have a friend, a, a good old friend from high school, and he um, he had some very serious issues, and his uh, uh, spouse, li living uh, girlfriend, has been taking very very good care of him. And he's kind of a curmudgeonly guy, and he's like, oh, I don't want to do that. Well, when I feel like it, you know, that kind of response to everything. And we were sitting, uh, I don't know, it was a few months back. We were sitting on the porch, and sh the girls went off, and he said to me kind of like a secret he said she's really been great she's really oh she's really taken great care of me this is i can't believe it and yet that's not how he responds to her mm. his response to her was yeah when i feel like it yeah, yeah. I, I found that a, a fascinating dynamic he re truly appreciates her he just can't do what she wants on general principle <laughs> Yeah, we tend to like we we just we kind of rebel against control, right? Or it's somebody trying to make a demand of us. But but interesting, yeah. That that brings me to another idea about just the notion of sharing appreciations, right? Thank yeah. you for your concern. You know, thanks for bringing it to my attention. I don't want to talk about it right now, or I'm a little scared about this right now. But you bring, make a good point. You know, kind of acknowledging you know our partner coming to us yeah. is important. Yeah. Uh, and health, you know, this is a great combination question because uh, our health is so entwined with who we are and our self-perception and so entwined with our perception of the people we love. Uh, we don't want to see them change. We don't want right. to see them get older. We don't want to see them get infirm. We don't want to see them sick. Uh, and we know, I think instinctively, we know that when somebody we love gets sick, there really isn't much we can do about it. We can call the doctor. We can give them medicines. We can do all that. But, you know, health is such a um, an important topic, and yet it 
ultimately it's out of our hands. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I, and yet, oh, go ahead, sorry, Art, no, no. Art go ahead. I, I think that uh, one of the issues that uh, also floats around in the background is that if you see somebody who's in declining health that you're in a relationship with, yeah. uh, if they don't allow you to uh, talk to them about it and maybe seek help and get a better outcome that they would get by ignoring it, if that's what they're doing, is that the burden is going to fall upon the person who uh, wants to help with uh, and ask the questions about um, their, uh, their concern because it's going to fall on them to take care of them perhaps yeah. and maybe put them in financial ruin or uh, distress and other things. So it's not just the concern for the other person, but also for themselves. And that could be part of the frustration. Yeah. Do you find that? Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's just, it's one of those things to share in, in a way that's not accusatory, right? Or blaming or judging, but like, gee, I'm really concerned. And if we don't attend to this, you know, what could happen? And you might not, you might have some, you know, limitations going forward. And, you know, how's that going to work for you and for us as a couple? So those are the questions, those are the ways to bring it up and to share your concerns. Good okay. advice. And, and uh, uh, if uh, people want to uh, reach out to you, uh, they can go to your website, w w you're on the That'd screen. be three W's. Right. Three, w, w, yeah, w. That, you always have to do three yeah. W's. Okay. Well, what's the rest of it, Michelle? MichelleFabrica.com. Oh, okay, great. What a surprise. Right. And right, <laughs> probably right there below you, uh, depending upon how this <laughs> editing goes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Oh, I add, yeah, I want to add yeah. one more thing, just Please. so you don't mind. Just when you said, John, that there's like really nothing we can do, it's out of our hands. Yes, and we can just love them, right? And just hold their hand through it and be with them through it. And that is a lot. Yep. It, it is a lot. Yeah. It seems like enough, but it is, it's a tremendous uh, amount uh, that can be done. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse Bless me. you. Are you okay? You. John, <laughs> yeah. I'm really concerned about you. This is time to say goodbye so I can blow my nose and I, you don't have to watch me. I think, I think we're about uh, 30 seconds beyond saying, <laughs> Michelle, thank you for a wonderful conversation again. And we look forward to seeing you again. And always my uh, my admiration for my partner, John, who, okay. who sneezed COVID on screen. Night. We're going we're gonna to have to keep it rolling. We're going to do a pickup somewhere, all right? No, we're Let not. Me... You did a good sneeze. That was a good sneeze. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.